this is Brinkley's first speaking appearance. <laughs> so we'll hope, we hope you forgive him. But he's trained to be able to respond to all kinds of situations. So he should be all right. Are we? Oh, he's so beautiful. Um, animal assisted crisis response began in 1998 in a little town in Oregon, in Springfield, Thurston High School, where a 15-year-old boy showed up in school with a pistol in a bag, hid it in his locker. It had been stolen from a friend's father. The friend sold it to the kid for $100. He had it in his locker. It was found. I guess he bragged about it. It was found. It was taken from him. He went to the police department. And when he was released from he was expelled from the school. When he went to the police department, uh, came home, he shot his father and his mother. The next morning, he took his mother's SUV, his father's Ruger semi-automatic rifle, and another pistol, put a trench coat on, had about 1,000 rounds of ammunition, went back to the high school, and uh, entered the cafeteria, shot and killed two other children, uh, wounded about 20 or 25 other people, was subdued by seven other students when he was trying to reload, and he is spending a 111-year life term in prison with no parole. Two women who lived in the town or near the town had dogs who were good. They were associated uh, with the school, and they uh, went to the school with their dogs. They gave comfort and encouragement to the students. And uh, that was how Hope Animal Assisted Crisis Response started. We're the first organization in the country. There are two national organizations. We have national certification standards. And uh, so, so that's how we began. Uh, I'm going to try this with. Uh, to me, very new technology from an iPhone, and we'll see how we do. Uh, our, our purpose is to provide comfort and encouragement to people affected by crises and disasters. Uh, we're a volunteer organization, a nonprofit national organization. Provide comfort after traumatic events to people affected, including first responders. And it's turned out from our experience the help that we provide to first, first responders is absolutely critical. What they see and what they have to go through and what potentially uh, all of us won't, won't have to see or go through, uh, it makes an incredible impression. And dogs, just because they live in the present, they don't think about the past, they can draw people to the present. Um, I grew up uh, in the era where, and, and traveling a lot, in the airports, you would see the uh, Hare Krishna members in their saffron robes and um, maybe tinkling cymbals, uh, very peaceful, meditative. Well, meditation has now caught on. It's mainstream. You don't try to avoid these strange people in the airport anymore. Meditation's caught on. Uh, it's practiced widely. Mindfulness is taught in universities. And dogs can bring an aspect of mindfulness without any teaching. If you pet a dog, play with a dog, you're in the present. You're not thinking about bad things. You're not thinking about what happened to you or what might happen or what's coming. You're just there with a the dog. And for at least a few seconds or a few minutes, you can have a relaxing experience. I've never been on television before. <laughs> and just doing this makes me feel good. They also are very perceptive. They can tell who in the room needs them the most. And you see who he's looking at. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, the dogs, dogs are just incredible. Um, <coughs> dogs function in a lot of roles in society, a lot of formal roles. You know, service dogs are, and there's an infamous case of service dogs lately in, in East Hampton about uh, allowing a person into a, an establishment with a service dog. Service dogs are trained professionally to deal with some problem that the person has that they're with. And Americans with Disability Acts uh, provides this service, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, if, if he were a service dog and I wanted to walk in this building, uh, a person could ask me, what does a dog do specifically? What's he trained to do specially? And that they can ask. They can't ask for documentation. They can't ask you what's wrong with you. They can ask what the dog does. And uh, the places that we work and visit, we've seen amazing service dogs. The ones that are most, ama most amazing to me are the ones who uh, can sense if I'm going to have a seizure and fall down. They can sense whatever it is, electrical activity or whatever is going on. 
and they'll nudge you so you know, or they'd have a signal. They know you sit down and lie down so you don't fall down and, and hurt yourself. Uh, they're, they're just amazing, amazing things they can do. Uh, we serve anybody uh, without, uh, without regard to what they do. Um, there are service dogs, there are therapy dogs, and there are working dogs. Um, when you think of therapy dogs, they're really in, in two classes. There's uh, animal-assisted uh, uh, activities and animal-assisted therapy. And there are lots of local uh, AAT, uh, AAA groups around that if you have a dog and you want to join, you can. Um, there's a great one locally, Bright Spot Therapy Dogs. We're members of that. And uh, um, groups like that do activities like taking dogs to schools and sitting in reading groups with kids who have reading difficulties or are nervous about reading or are apprehensive because maybe at home they get corrected because they don't read fast enough or pronounce fast enough. And dogs can go there, just sit next to the kid, and the kids can read to the dogs. And suddenly they're reading, and then suddenly it's not so bad to read at home. Suddenly it's not so bad to read in front of the teacher. And it's just an amazing program. Now that's an animal-assisted activity. Animal-assisted therapy is, uh, for example, we visit the psychiatric facility at the Noble Hospital in, uh, in Westfield. And there we have a, a, a trained mental health professional who's with us in a room about this size, sometimes this many people, and people that are just like you and me. They just have a behavioral health issue that they're getting help with. And uh, so we go there. There are people that come in there and they think, oh, I'm in a psychiatric unit, and they don't want to talk to anybody. They just clam up. Brinkley will pick those out, or any trained dog will, will pick those kind of people out and go to them and help them to get reconnected and talk to him. And then the staff members, who are usually standing behind me listening, have things to talk to those people about. They'll usually talk about their family and friends and an other animals, their dogs. And uh, it's a, it's a tremendous, uh, tremendous experience for everybody, uh, in, including us. And sometimes we almost cry on the way home some of the things that, uh, that he's been able to do with people that have had great difficulties. The step up from that is animal-assisted crisis control. And uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we do in the role that we're in right now. And he's in service with his vest and me with my, my card and tag. And the, uh, the work that we do at that level is based on the animal-assisted therapy work that we do locally. That's a prerequisite for what we do. There are differences that are important to, uh, important, and I'll go through them quickly. Animal assisted therapy, it's usually scheduled in advance. Crisis response, there's no advance warning. You get called. Local work, travel by familiar means. The only thing wrong with this is I can't see it on the iPhone. Um, and various means of travel with crisis response on fire trucks, boats, maybe planes, maybe helicopters. Um, routine and predictable. When you go to the kids' reading program, or even when you go to the, uh, uh, the mental uh, uh, facilities or uh, adult daycare places that we go to, it's pretty predictable. And they're usually calm visits. Uh, sometimes there are really challenges in the hospital settings, in, in locked facilities, but it's uh, part of the challenge of being able to work with anything that's anything that happens. Um, crisis response can be chaotic with loud noises, bad sounds, and order odors. Um, crisis scenes with unpredictable intense emotions with people. And usually, locally, there's support staff available. Um, if you're out at a crisis, you have to be self-sufficient. Visits are usually less than two hours if you do the, uh, the local visits. Visits can last several days. We've been on call-outs where we've been there for seven days. Um, safe environment locally, usually not physically demanding. We work usually with teams, other teams for safety, as, as this group do. Call-outs are physically demanding. What we do can be expensive. We pay our own costs. We're all, we're all volunteers. Um, and we, we get there by whatever means and uh, uh, take care of all the charges ourselves. Local, local uh, work is minimal cost. 
dogs only. With crisis response, dogs are recognized by first responders as oh, dogs are okay. In local stuff, rabbits can do it. I've seen llamas do it. Um, after the, uh, after the, uh, the Boston Marathon uh, disaster, uh, the Red Cross had a pony come and visit and lick people. Now, we're trained no licks. So if you want him to kiss you, he won't do it. Because we're trained, a lot of people think they're going to get dog germs. And so we train no, uh, no kisses. Uh, we're a national organization. We're, we're all over the place. And uh, we come from all over the place. This is a group of us when we did our training at uh, Bradley Airport. And uh, uh, a fun, amusing thing about that was as we walked through the airport with all the dogs wearing little green vests, uh, there were several groups of people seated. This was early in the morning. Several groups of people seated there, and uh, they had to look like, oh, my goodness, there is a bomb threat. Aww. Because all the dogs with vests are walking through the airport, but uh, it wasn't a bomb threat. And we stopped and explained to them that it was, that it was really okay. So as, uh, as Kathleen mentioned, we're, we're members of uh, National VOAD. Uh, our president is on their uh, committee for emotional and spiritual care. Um, we're active members in state VOADs. Uh, Brinkley and I are representatives in the Massachusetts VOAD. And we have a meeting there on Tuesday we'll be going to. Uh, and I said we were the first, uh, the first in the country with national standards. This is the testimony that we go everywhere. Uh, we have spoken at the national VOAD meeting. Um, this is the state VOAD meeting at Steve Napoli, the state, uh, state VOAD chairman from the Red Cross. And the top picture was me uh, testifying to the Connecticut legislature about crisis response dogs. And if you ever have a chance to testify before a state legislature, do it. It's an incredible experience. It's like... It's like presenting to kindergarten right before lunch or recess. <laughs> uh, the legislators are, they walk around, they eat lunch, they're having conversations, they're burping. One was having some kind of a seizure, I think. But uh, it's, a, it's a really interesting experience. But, uh, but we, we advocate for the cause, and it's a really, it's a really great cause. Since, uh, well, after the 1998 event in Oregon, these same two women were called to the World Trade Center in 2001. They took four dogs. They were called by the Red Cross, I believe it was. We do not self-deploy, critically, critically, critically important. Do not self-deploy. Uh, we were called by the Red Cross, and uh, so they, uh, they served there. And what they saw and what they experienced, they really realized the need for psychological first aid and care of the caregiver. And so they started then a program that, uh, that dealt with a lot of training uh, for everybody involved. Uh, we work with uh, local and national response agencies, uh, but we have to be called. Uh, and it's either the uh, incident command structure or somebody who's already been called. You guys, uh, the Red Cross, Salvation Army, we work with all groups. Um, we're self-sufficient in food and lodging, deploy only at the request. And uh, Brinkley's brought his backpack. Uh, we carry all the first aid, uh, all the doggy supplies with us uh, wherever we go, and, and people supplies. And of course, we respond without charge. Uh, we have the requirements that the dog has to participate, as I said, in a local animal assisted therapy organization for at least a year and do at least 12 visits uh, a year. Uh, then they're screened for applicability for crisis response work, and the people are screened. Uh, if I look like or if I divulge that I have previous traumatic experience that makes me turn into a puddle of tears every time I think of a disaster of some sort, I'm not going to be very effective. And uh, it won't do any good if the dog is great. If I'm there with the dog and upsetting people, it's not, not good. Uh, so we train about all kinds of crisis and disaster phases. We do communication skills with people suffering from trauma. Uh, all the crisis response protocols were required to do the FEMA uh, uh, certification. We do field training with emer emergency responders. A lot of work on self-management and self-care, debriefing when we're done. It's important to get out what you saw and what you felt so that you can get on with your normal life later psychological first aid and canine behavior and welfare. Uh, with us, just as, as was said before, the dog is number one. If we're in a situation where we think the dog is at risk, we will withdraw. And we're like the safety officer. Uh, we're gone. We're not going to stay. 
the dog is, is always number one. Um, yeah, the dogs have to develop resilience to all kinds of things because they'll see all kinds of things and they can't get cringy and run away. So we started, uh, we live in Southampton, we started by going to the Southampton uh, Fire Department. We were driving by one day and saw they were out uh, washing the trucks and they had the hoses out. So I stopped and asked if we could walk around and just get the experience. And they really were accommodating. They drove out the bigger trucks, turned on the sirens, and they had a good, really good training experience, just locally. And then we have done that, uh, that further. Uh, canine body language and uh, uh, signs that, uh, when you sit, you can sit. You go. Signs that they're having stress. He's just wondering what's going on right now. What am I, what am I doing standing here? Uh, signs of aggressive animals. So a dog barring his teeth with his tail up in the air is not as dangerous as a dog that's cringing with his tail down but looks like he might not like you. That dog is much more fearful and apprehensive. It's much more likely to bite you. So we learn all about those kinds of things. Um, we have a, uh, it's off the top of the chart, we have a three-day intensive training seminar. And it's, uh, this, is, this is the group I was in. A lot of golden retrievers show up. Brinkley's back here. Uh, there's another one over here. But uh, any kind of dog can do the work. Uh, we have uh, Rottweilers. We have uh, uh, a Great Pyrenees with a birth defect with one paw that doesn't work and he manages on three feet. We have a retired uh, seeing eye dog that uh, um, had to get replaced by the person that had them as a seeing eye dog and their working dog. And uh, a dog that had uh, cancer as a pup and uh, we call her a tripod dog. She has just one rear leg. Any, any dog can do it. Pit bulls have a sad, unfortunately sad reputation. Pit bulls that are socialized and live with people and get treated well are pussy cats. They're just great. We don't typically have many pit bulls because people are so afraid of pit bulls. It used to be Rottweilers were that way and German Shepherds, and they used to call them Rottenweilers. But they're all, they're all great if they're, if they're well socialized. Um, we work with first responders, get the smells, the noises, uh, we worked around fire trucks with uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the ladders up and uh, hammering with uh, sledgehammers against uh, doors, uh, chainsaws, uh, all types of transportation. This is, this is Brinkley training at Bradley, and Southwest Airlines is great with working dogs, taking working dogs. This is the tripod dog. This is Katie Lynn uh, with a, uh, a Southwest Airlines pilot on her way to the call out we had at the Washington Navy Yard last year. Um, they get the royal treatment. Uh, they really do get the royal treatment and they're really appreciated more and more by, by more people more widely. Uh, we train with all kinds of environments and noises. This is the, uh, <coughs> this is the Erie National Guard at uh, a training session annual meeting that we held last year in Pennsylvania. Um, We're required to do the, the FEMA incident command training, which you guys are too, and we did that just uh, a few months ago. Maintain Red Cross first aid and CPR training, animal first aid and CPR training, and we have annual goals for continuing education and uh, participation in call outs and drills. Some of the certificates, this is the one, this is the one you'll all get when you do the online thing from FEMA. It's very pretty. Uh, the Red, Red Cross ones that we've got, uh, another group that's really interesting and worthwhile is the critical, International Critical Incident Stress Foundation that has a lot of uh, great courses and information. Uh, again, uh, crisis response drills. This was with the fire trucks and the guy with the chainsaw. And uh, they, I think they'd turn the lights off if they didn't think we'd all fall asleep and then we'd all fail. Uh, you can't see it too well. This is at 9-11. This is ground zero at the World Trade Center. And this was our founding member and, and her dog. Uh, at, uh, at Ground Zero 9-11. That dog's name was Tikva. He, uh, he just died a couple weeks ago. This is uh, the Virginia Tech shootings in, um, you can't see it up there, 2005. Uh, we were called there. This is another one of the, uh, the, the famous dogs in our group. His name was also Brinkley. Uh, Brinkley has turned out to be a popular dog name because of the movie uh, you've got mail with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. There's a golden retriever named Brinkley, and he was the star. We saved that name 
uh, till, till we got Brinkley. And these guys uh, named him Brinkley right after that movie was out. Brinkley also just died. Um, this is uh, Hurricane Katrina, 2005. Um, this is, uh, you can't really read it, this is a program called uh, Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors, TAPS program. This is uh, mostly in the Washington area. These are services for uh, families of, uh, grieving families of fallen military folks. And uh, uh, it's a tremendous, uh, a tremendous response that the dogs get from, from even those kinds of people, that they're remembered, that they're respected, and that, that people will come out, and, uh, come out and, and try to help them kind of feel better. This is uh, Superstorm Sandy in 2012. This was the cover of the uh, Salvation Army magazine. This is one of our dogs right here at Ortley Beach, New Jersey. Uh, rugby, an Irish water spaniel who's like the national champion, but he also does this on the side. Um, Prescott, Arizona wildfires in 2013. We got called there, and that was extremely challenging. It was 100% humidity, 100 degrees, and we were there for, I wasn't there, but our, our group was there for, uh, for a week. Um, this is the Colorado floods in 2013. Uh, this is one of our dogs with a Red Cross worker at the uh, uh, the Colorado uh, uh, Supply Center of the Red Cross. And uh, remarkably, when we were at a uh, state VOAD meeting in October last year, they had a state VOAD summit, uh, one of the people there was a mass supply uh, provider for the Red Cross. She was there, and she met this dog. So it's a kind of small world sometimes. We have, we have vets who are members, but uh, in this case, we never go where there is a risk. So we're not near the fires. We're in the town. We're in the town, and there's, there's smoke in the town. But uh, the dogs would take breaks. It's required. We, we take breaks about every hour and a half or so and get to where it's cooler and make sure that they're not, uh, they're not overstressed, that we watch for the panting and make sure they always have water and, and those, sorts, those sorts of things. Um, this is a, a program called Veterans Honor Flights, and um, it's, hard to, it's hard to see here, but uh, from major airports, they do it in Boston, this is in Rochester. We have a member who lives in Rochester with, with this uh, German Shepherd named Phoenix, and uh, veterans who are probably not ever going to make another flight or don't have a whole lot of time left, go to Washington, go around to monuments, uh, see places where they might have served, and... Uh, we um, go and, and, and see them off or greet them when they return. Often state governors are there uh, and all kinds, of, uh, all kinds of other veterans organizations supporting them as they go off and make these trips. Usually it's a couple days they go and um, they really come back really uplifted from their experience and, and from having the support of all the people coming out for them. And it's great for us just being there to see them uh, experience that. This is the Washington Navy Yard shootings in 2013. Uh, all kinds of dogs serve. These are two Shih Tzus. This is Emma and the bear. And this is Ray Mabus, the Secretary of the Navy. And behind him is uh, Admiral French, uh, Commanding Officer of the Navy Yard. And um, it's great to see that even these kind of people will smile at dogs, <laughs> uh, even under those kind of circumstances. Is that what uh, smiling strike looks like? Uh, not, not so much. Well, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> at least they're looking at you. Uh, Th this guy's smiling. He's an assistant secretary of uh, health and human services. But, yeah, when they'll address you. Uh, I did get a smile when, when we walked in, and I didn't know who these people were, and the admiral was coming toward us, and we had six dogs, and they gave us a rest office in the admiral's office area, and we're walking in, and he's coming. He did double take with all these dogs, and I said to him, this is the SPCA, isn't it? <laughs> um, but they, they can't smile, especially when there's not a camera. Uh, this is outside his headquarters. Um, this, is, this is Brinkley over here. And uh, this is the, the Great Pyrenees with the, with the birth defect hobbling around. Uh, this is a uh, Homeland Security officer from uh, 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 Virginia. And uh, um, it's just a tremendous group of people, as you'll find as you work together 
with this group. It's a tremendous group of people that, uh, that do these things. We were asked to go to the uh, memorial uh, for the shooting victims and uh, on the, uh, the green in the middle of the Navy Yard. Uh, and this is the very, very first time that Brinkley ever rolled on his back. He has, he has, he had never done it. He was almost four then. He has done it once or twice since, only with people that really need him to roll on his back. So if he does it for you, you know that you're really needy in some way. <laughs> he will not do it for me. He won't roll over. But uh, <coughs> anyway, um, as I said, the critical thing is we do not self-deploy. Like this group does not self-deploy. And it's so great to be with groups that do not self-deploy. Um, the, the volunteers that show up uh, can cause more trouble, more difficulty. The Boston Marathon, a lot of people showed up with dogs, self-deployed, uninvited, and uh, it's, it's not a good thing to do. Uh, they're not trained. Uh, they're not trained. You can do more harm with the trauma victims that you talk to without training. Um, it's, it's, just, it's just not done. When there was the, the school shootings at uh, Sandy Hook in Connecticut, our regional director called and offered assistance. And they said, we don't, we don't want, thank you, thank you, thank you. We don't want assistance, but please stay away. There's just too much going on. A lot of dogs showed up, and they did some good, but they weren't really wanted there. Uh, we subsequently got a letter from the governor thanking us for the offer of service and thanking us for staying away. And he's telling me that it's time. That's what the, that's what the head lean means. Um, but uh, just in conclusion, it's, it's incredible to see what dogs can do when you're dealing with people that have trauma that people can't do. And oftentimes, it's just silence and let them, let them be with the dog. Uh, he's had uh, so many people in, for example, the Washington Navy Yard um, cry on him and tell him the stories of what they saw and what they experienced. It's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, and if I had not had psychological first aid training, it would have been an extremely, extremely difficult thing to overcome even, even now, you know, almost a year later. But um, they do great, and uh, we're looking forward to working with uh, and helping you guys. And uh, so that's Brinkley's presentation. Can you take a bow? Take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.